I was applying it as thinly as possible, which is not good. We picked up a special little thing for the tops of the plant stands. Hi everyone, this is Lauren from the LKS Address. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I am excited for this fun little easy project that I'm going to tackle this week. We thought of it last minute as we were finishing up our family room renovation. We needed something for this corner back here as decor. So in this video, we're going to be DIYing a plant plinth pedestal. Say that three times. We are going to make this as easy as possible with minimal cuts. So let's go shopping for our materials. Okay, we picked out our wood. We have the three foot and the four foot pieces. These are key to doing no cuts, but we'll tell you more about that when we get home. We're back at home with our materials and we actually went back to Menards and did a little exchange. So we ended up with a one by 12 set by three feet tall and a one by 16 set by three feet tall. We originally had four foot in the smaller board. It seemed a little tall for our ceiling height. So we're going to go this route and shave a little bit off of the thicker one. So that's a tiny bit shorter. You don't necessarily need to do this. So it could still be a no cut pedestal table, but for us, because we're doing two different sizes, we want them varied a little bit. So let's get started. Just mocked up our first plant pedestal table. Normally I would say we would miter the corners so we have really clean corner joints, but because this is a no cut project, we're just gonna butt up the corners as we move around. So now that we know that this works as a concept, I am going to start applying wood glue to each edge and then I'm gonna go in and shoot brad nails. And then for some extra attachment, we are going to use some corner braces and screw those in from the inside. As I mentioned off camera, we did end up trimming down the fatter one by 16 plant pedestal. We took off about nine inches so that these both had varied heights. Definitely not necessary, but if you're doing a set of two, it might be nice again to have the varied heights. Starting off the assembly by applying wood glue. I am applying this liberally to the first edge that I'm doing, and then I'm going to use a combination of clamps and corner clamps to line up the corner before I go in with the brad nails. I'm shooting four brad nails into each side and we'll have all of the products we use to assemble this and the whole plant stand linked in the description below for reference. As I finish each side, I remove the clamps, add the next piece of wood, and the trickiest side is the last side because you have to line up two edges at once. So I just focused on one edge first, got that glued, clamped, and brad nailed, and then focused on the final edge and getting all of that lined up. And I think Cam even helped make sure that this was lined up before I started nailing. After all four sides of the plant stand were assembled, I went in with the corner L brackets, using these for a little extra insurance. We're gonna use them, four of them on each corner at the top and the bottom, just to make sure that this plant stand is incredibly sturdy. All right, just finished getting the first box assembled with the wood glue, the brad nails, and the corner brackets. And now we're going to do the second box, the same exact steps off camera. We just finished getting the second and taller pedestal table assembled. So up next is filling the seams with wood filler. We like to use the Fama wood and then we're gonna get that sanded and prime and prepped for the final finish. For 
for the wood filler, I am liberally applying the wood filler to fill any gaps between two pieces of wood or if there's any large knots that I need to smooth out. I like to apply it with the small plastic putty knife. Once I have all four sides of both plant stands wood filled and it has cured, it is time to sand it smooth. I wanna make sure that I have the smoothest surface possible for our finish. So I'm going to use either a 180 or a 220 grit sandpaper. And because this is raw wood, the next step is going to be priming the wood to prep for our final finish. Before I prime, I like to tack cloth and remove any dust. And then I am going in with the Benjamin Moore Fresh Start Acrylic Primer. One coat will do the trick just to seal it off for us for the next step. I worked last night and I finished doing the wood fill, the sanding, and I got a coat of primer on both of the tables. I will do a quick sand with like a 220 or a 320 grit sandpaper to just smooth that out a little bit more because the primer always raises the green. And now let's talk about how we're actually going to finish these pedestal tables. But to do that, let's go on a little field trip to our kitchen. I'm now standing in our kitchen and if you were around for our kitchen renovation, you may have seen us do our kitchen hood, which we used Portola paint Roman clay. It is kind of like a plaster that you apply with a putty knife that gives it a really nice like texture and a finish. We actually have leftover Roman clay from the range hood and that's what I'm planning to use on the pedestal tables. So let me tell you more about that now. As I mentioned, we still have leftover Roman clay from our kitchen hood. So I just thought it would be the perfect finish for these. Also, what's gonna be nice about that is we'll have some repetitive elements from the kitchen to the family room since they open up to each other. We used the Roman clay in the color Charleston. They have a bunch of different colors. They have a whole palette. You can order samples and they ship nationwide. So we just ordered this online and got it delivered to our house. So this is very accessible if you wanna recreate it with Roman clay. And you basically just apply it with a putty knife. You can either use a plastic or a metal. I found that with a lighter color, the plastic works better because the metal does start to leave marks. We are going to do two coats of Roman clay and see how it looks. That's what we did on the hood. So I think that'll be good. And then we're gonna get these plant pedestals wrapped up. So let's get our quicksand going. And then tonight I am going to apply the Roman clay. It's finally time to apply the first coat of Roman clay. And I am not going to try to teach you how to apply this Portolo paint Roman clay. Portolo Paints has great instructional YouTube videos on the best way to apply the product. So I will link those in the description below. That's what we watched to learn how to do this properly. Not gonna lie, when you first start applying the Roman clay and it's in a very light coat, it really does look scary. I was even questioning if I was doing this correctly, but I had faith because again, I know how our range hood turned out. So I am going to trust the process. I'm also gonna point out that I am going to do the first coat on all four sides and then I am immediately going to do a second coat on all four sides. This is what Portola recommends and this is exactly how we did our hood and the finish turned out wonderfully. Quick plant stand update. It's actually been a quick minute since I've worked on them. I think I mentioned that I was using leftover Roman clay from our hood and spoiler alert, I ran out of Roman clay. I was applying it as thinly as possible, which is not good to try and see if I could finish the plant stands with what I had left and it was not enough. So I actually had to place an order and get a whole nother quart of the Roman clay in the color Charleston so that I can finish this project, which kind of defeats the purpose of using leftovers, but it's all good. I really like it in the color and it coordinates perfectly with our kitchen. So now that we have the product, let's apply the final coat. But first, Cam is going to help me with a quick sand on each of them. And then we will apply that final coat.
while we were waiting for our newest thing of Roman clay to get delivered, we picked up a special little thing for the tops of the plant stands. We are using stone remnants from our fireplace behind me, and those will be the tops. This is absolutely not necessary. You could pick up a marble tile or just do a wood top that's covered in the Roman clay, but we wanted it to coordinate directly with our fireplace. So let me show you a quick little sneak peek of what it looks like. Cam is gonna model for us. We picked these up from our fabricator. I reached out to him and asked if he had extra stone for small pieces for us, and he did. So he cut it for us, which is awesome because, again, it's going to coordinate perfectly with the fireplace. We got two pieces, one for the small plant stand and one for the large, and I just cannot wait to see what it looks like finished. Last check-in on the plant stands. We got the final coat of Roman clay on both of them. And you can also see that we created a little trim piece for the top of each. I will show you that in a minute. We placed the stone on and I was not super happy with the, the joint between the stone and the Roman clay. So we added that to make it a little bit more intentional and I think it really solves the problem. So let's show you that and then get these plant stands fully assembled and styled in the family room. Okay, so here is the trim piece that we created. This is totally optional. We didn't even film us making it because it's really not necessary, but this is lattice trim and we basically just made a quarter inch overhang for each side. We mitered the corners and then we painted it a color to match the Roman clay. This is Benjamin Moore Pashmina. We did this on both and it will create just a little bit of a protrusion when we place the stone on top. It'll make sense once we get these fully assembled. So let's do that. For the trim piece on the top of the plant stands, I am just going to apply wood glue to the perimeter and put the trim on top. Then we're gonna place the stone and the stone is just gonna sit on top. It's very heavy, so it is not going anywhere. And before we reveal these plant stands, we first have a little bit of plant shopping to do. Just went on a quick shopping trip for some new plants for our plant stands. Because they're in the back corner of our family room, we needed to make sure we got plants that were good for low light and indirect light and also measured the plant stand and the pots we're gonna put them in. So we were being very methodical about it. Picked up a couple things and let's get these plant stands wrapped up. And with that, we're gonna wrap up the video here. We hope you enjoyed our plaster plant pedestal table build. This was a quick, fun project that hopefully some of you can tackle at home if you're interested. We're hoping to incorporate more fun projects like this into our whole house renovation. We have so many more projects in the works for 2024. So if you like this video, please thumbs up the video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.